This is a talk about being stung by things in your aquarium, poisoned, bitten, um, anything that could hurt you, but it is, it is, it is not all doom and gloom. Um, there is mostly just funny anecdotes. So if you get getting hurt, my friends are getting hurt. Uh, so hopefully though you learn something and it may be a little bit more careful in the future. One of the first things you're probably likely to get stung by as far as coral or, or uh, anemones, cnidarians, is a carpet anemone. Uh, the sting on these guys is pretty powerful. It hurts pretty, pretty good. Um, very sticky. Uh, and that's actually one of the points you'll notice when looking for an anemone, uh, a healthy one to purchase. If it is not sticky, uh, it's not healthy. Uh, the stickiness is them stinging you. And sometimes the stings are rather hard to miss. Uh, you know you have a fish geek problem when the first reaction is to run and get your camera after you've been stung instead of uh, removing the nematocyst from your fingers. Uh, but that's of course my hand. And I was just cleaning my display tank and it was a green carpet anemone. And I was just wiping off the glass and uh, just built up enough of a current uh, moving my hand back and forth that this, the anemone that was normally in the sand just laying flat kind of lifted up from the current kind of rushed forward and just hit my hand. And it left it maybe a half, a dozen, a dozen and a half uh, stinging nematocysts in my finger. Nice burning sensation, a uh, little localized pain, and you had to go pluck out each one of those individually after, of course, I took the picture. Um, so you do want to be careful of these things. They, the cnidarians are all the stinging cell organisms. All the corals, all the anatomies, they're all perfectly capable of stinging you and hurting you. There's also some concern for anaphylactic shock. Um, if you've been stung repeatedly, like a little kid, you're not normally born allergic to bee stings. But little kids that run around bare feet and run through enough clover fields uh, end up being adults and have to carry EpiPens around. Uh, so you do want to be careful. Repeated exposures to these things, particularly people that work in the industry, can be very uh, problematic for you. Uh, Euphilia species is one of the most likely ones to, uh, it seems to be people that have problems and develop problems with these. Uh, they're very popular, all the hammers, the frog spawns, the torches, they're all very popular corals. People handle them a lot of times, they're easy to fragment, particularly the branching ones. Um, so those are the ones I hear more and more people say, you know what, at first I didn't feel anything, but now after a couple of years, man, when I pick up an Euphilia that hurts. Uh, and that's a warning sign. Your body's telling you, quit doing that. Quit picking those things up. Uh, you are going to have problems eventually. Uh, but very powerful things on these guys. Other ones to be careful of, the elegance corals and the galaxy corals, galaxia. You can see the picture on the right there, the long sweeper tentacle on those galactic corals. Very powerful sting. Uh, I'm actually from Pittsburgh. Uh, the public aquarium in Pittsburgh is very nice. If you ever have a chance, you should take it in. It's part of the zoo. But um, they had a, they still have it. It's a 2,000 gallon reef display. Mixed reef, full of many, many different kind of corals. After two years of them setting it up, it happened to have a galaxia coral, um, was one of the ones. The galaxy coral, a kenya tree, and the yellow pears and rancus, the little yellow polyps. Between the three of them, they had killed every other coral in that tank, smothered, stung, outgrew, and shaded them to the point that there was only three species left out of something that probably had 100 species or more. These are animals. They compete as animals for space, for food, uh, and room to grow. So keep that in mind when you're making your mixed reefs. Think about those pictures of the reef that you've ever seen that, you know, you flip through any of the Bornemann books, the, the Varen books are very good for this. You, you, you see this picture and you see nothing but plating acros for as far as the eye can see, or nothing but big toadstool leather. So, you know, there's many pictures, many scenes like that, where it's one species of coral forever, you know, hundreds and hundreds of yards. Well, the reason they caught that way is they killed everything else in that area over time. And then eventually a typhoon, cyclone, hurricane comes through, rocks strips it down to the ground, and everything starts over. Um, but those are the kind of things. It's the competition you're going to see in your aquariums over time. You know, people call it new tank syndrome or old tank syndrome or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's basically them killing each other, whether through stings or chemical warfare. 
Octasia, again, a, pe a, a pest in most people's aquariums, uh, can be uh, problematic for people. Uh, one of the most likely ways you're going to get stung and hurt from the Octasias is you get an outbreak in your tank, uh, you go in there with chemicals, calcloss or paste, various uh, chemical injections people market, uh, maybe you do the peppermint shrimp or a butterfly, things like that, and you clean up the display. And you think you have no problem all cared for. And then, you know, you buy this new, mostly it's tankways, clownfish, bad guys, and mandarins. They all end up getting, new ones end up getting washed over in your overflow box. Uh, and you have to reach back there and get one of those guys out of there. And you'll discover that your overflow box is full of pages and you come out with the inside of your arm all red and welty. Um, happened to me a bunch of different times. Um, on the plus side, it's not, that, it's not that difficult to deal with that. You know, uh, you just shut your pumps off, scrape that down bare, and, and just flush that all out. You know, just taking the, the drain line off into a bucket. Um, but you'll learn quickly that, you know, when you go in to get that errant fish, there's a lot of nasty stuff back in there that you might not be aware of. Um, but these will also kill corals. I mean, you've seen them encroach on other corals and up through the uh, branches of acros and taking things out. They uh, do have a pretty powerful sting and something you want to be careful of. Don't go squishing them with your finger or anything like that. <laughs> Hydroids, most people don't have problems with these. Um, I did see one case in Cincinnati where a guy had a 300 gallon display that, you know, I, whenever I have had these little hydroids, it's a little fuzzy guys in the bottom, they'll come in and they'll be like dime size growth on a piece of live rock. And five years later, it'll be nickel size. They don't seem to spread very much. But Sean, they spread over every square inch of his tank. Glass, sand, rock, everything. Killed every coral, killed a lot of his fish, um, encroached upon it. So ever since seeing his, his tank, I've been careful. If I see him, you know, I'll just cleave him off with a, a chisel and a hammer. And uh, just take the rock off, a little bit of the rock with him. And you can get rid of him that way. You can get rid of Aptasia the same way. I'll just take a little bit of the rock off. Bristle worms, if you work in this industry and you're handling a lot of live rock, or if you're rearranging, re your tank, you're going to get your hands all torn up by these, by four inch, by lots of little things. Um, if you do get the hairs, you know, these little hair-like things, um, think of it like a porcupine. It leaves all these little needles in your hand, but there's no good way to get them out. One of the best ways that I've ever heard, and it's not great, is to uh, dry with your hand and then use duct tape and apply it like you're taking a lint off. It hurts, uh, but other than that, you pick it up and pluck it out. White vinegar. Well, yeah, yeah, you can use vinegar and try and dissolve them off. Um, but the best way is to use some gloves. Don't get stuck in the first place. Uh, it's far easier to avoid those kind of things. Um, they're not really problematic in most people's aquariums. If you have a proliferation of these bristle worms, you have hundreds, thousands creeping, crawling, looking gross all over the place, you're overfeeding. Uh, a couple here and there, they're fine scavengers, and, and that's it. They're scavenging off of over, uh, extra food. So if you have hundreds of them everywhere, um, I've seen some displays where they're crawling out. You can see the guy feed the tank, and all of a sudden they all come shooting out of the rock. It's pretty creepy. Um, he's chucking in way too much. Again, handling live rock, there's a lot of things on there that can tear you up. These hard tooth uh, feather dusters are very jagged edge, cut your hands up, you end up uh, getting some swelling, the skin feels tight the next morning. A uh, little four amps, I don't have a good picture of them, but they're the little pink purple things, about the size of a BB, but they're jagged, um, pointy. You, you'll see them in, on, on rock. Um, they'll tear your hands up real good, very hard. They don't give any food. A lot of live rock. If you're working in a pet store, handling a lot of live rock for customers, you're liable to get a lot of cuts uh, from these, which can be problematic. And I'll show you some issues with that come up later.